if we win, we win a bounty. So that kind of equalizes the fact that we face loser calling ranges because we still have this additional reward of winning their bounties. Let's crush. As promised, guys, here we're going to be looking into the 9-6 offhand from the $3,000 PKO tournament on Naturite or GG Poker. We're on the bubble. I was the chip leader. I mean, we can just quickly watch the um hand history and you see also the stack size so we were five left four paid and we see that we have a nine eight and 13 big man short stack with the ship leader and yeah now i was debating whether we should be shoving this hand i folded because i thought that in a pko and this is also true uh calling ranges are much looser so i wanted to shove a little bit um <clears throat> tighter than in a um freeze out tournament but let's now look into the quiz. Today, I'm gonna to be going over three, four questions. The rest of the quiz, you can do in paired if you sign up. I've received a little bit of heat that I'm doing a lot of these quizzes that are actually supposed to be exclusively for uh, our customers, which I understand. So I would try to share as much as possible, guys, so that you still learn as much as possible. But of course, I don't wanna put everything on YouTube because this is where a lot of uh, students have paid money. And of course, I can understand when uh, that pisses them off. However, there are going to be another, a lot of other bunch of free quizzes that you can do on, on paired. So if you just want to test it out, feel free to head over to uh, raiseedge.com slash paired or paired.com. And yeah, you can just test it out and see if it if it's something for you. So how wide should we shove here given the direct bubble and the bounty in action? 70%, 40%, 100%. Um, yeah, I would have guessed around 70%. And uh, let's have a look into the explanation. As we can see, we're shoving 100%. I actually thought that we would be shoving tighter than that simply because we um, are facing loser calling ranges. It's a bounty tournament. So people should know that on a bounty tournament, even on the bubble, you're calling uh, a little bit looser than a freeze out tournament because you have a separate price pool you don't want to blind down you don't want to become one of the short stacks so even on the bubble you try to maintain your stack and you have the ability once you make it into the money that you can win bounties and if you're one of the shorter stacks you don't have the ability because everyone else is covering you however here's still something uh, very beneficial for us two things a we're facing stack sizes where all of them i have to call relatively tight because there's um, yeah, they all have an equal stack and yeah, for them busting would be still quite expensive. But the most important part, part is that if we win, we win a bounty. So that kind of equalizes the fact that we face loser calling ranges because we still have this additional reward of winning their bounties, which is of course um, an added benefit for us. And thus we have an any, any two pushing range in this spot. So. We're shoving 100%, um, it's a clear any two spot. If it was a, not a bounty tournament, where we shove less in theory? Um, I would not think, so even if I assume 70%, um, or actually, no, that's not true. I thought that we would be shoving less in a bounty tournament. So that means, so it means if it's a freeze out, we will shove less in theory. But a freeze out, I would have thought we shove more because um, people are supposed to call tighter, right? In a freeze out here, in a PKO, there's an additional price pool. Uh, for you, surviving the bubble with a short stack is not so important as in a, in a freeze out because then you can't win any bounties, right? So uh, this is false. And let's also have a look into the explanation video. So in a freeze-out tournament, in a non pico tournament, we are shoving any two as well. There, the ICM pressure is also really high because now there is no separate price pool. There are no bounties to fight for. So it's even more important to make it to the money. But of course, once we're being called, we also don't really have the added benefit of winning their bounties. However, their calling ranges are supposed to be much tighter. So we're going to be call, uh, facing less calls in theory. Thus, we're going to be shoving any two here as well. All right, next question. And now, very interesting to see, assuming that cutoff shoves any two in a bounty format, what should button call according to theory? Um, let's make it a little bit bigger in case you guys can't see it. So 
So this is very interesting for a button. Of course, just assuming for the sake of simplicity of cutoff shafts, 100% uh, of hands, what is button supposed to call? And you can think for yourself, is it the first range, second range? Uh, so it would be 3%, 6% or 4%. And I would have, I think this would have been too tight. I definitely thought would think that tens and nines are in there. Um, so, of course, I know the answer, but I want to be honest with you. Uh, I guess this one here, which is wrong. And we see that how wide Button is calling, even though he's not the shortest stack. But you can really see like ace tens here, right, and pocket sevens, which I think a lot of people people would have folded. Uh, intuitively, I would definitely call wider than in a freeze out. But yeah, let's have a look into the explanation. So the button calls relatively loose here, which I would think that most would have anticipated a much tighter calling range. But you can see that on these bubbles, of course, this is a four or five handed bubble. So more important for smaller field tournaments. And this drastically changes if you have a larger field tournament. Um, but here, in a PKO, there is a separate price pool, and that is very important. So very often you're gonna see these ace jack, ace queen calls, even though you have one, two, three big blinds more than the shortest stack, and you, we talk about eight, nine big blinds. So this is a big league. I've seen also I've seen in my own game that I've been calling way too tight in these spots. So we definitely can lose up and flick in those calls. Also remember that cutoff is not going to be shoving aces, kings, queens. So then ace, jack, ace, queen, uh, pocket nines, all these calls become much better uh, in reality. All right. And last spot for today that I want to uh, solve with you spot is what should button call if cutoff shoves any two in a non-bounty tournament. So now we don't have the impact of the bounties, just a freeze out. And it's really good to study that way to see the impact of bounty and a non-bounty tournament. What is the difference? And did I get this right? Yeah, I think the in general, uh, when you're one of the mid stacks or let's say the shorter stacks, but you know, the, not the shortest stack, the pocket pairs are always stronger than let's say ace queen. Because mm, we have more equity against ace queen, you're gonna have a lot of like 60, 40 races against eight, six off and 10, three suited type of hands. And with pocket eights, you have more hands dominated. So that's why we should always favor the pocket pairs. I think this is, then this is to lose. Yeah. And I think I get also guessed this correctly. And now the ranges are getting looser and looser, especially now when you're one of the players that is left to act big blind or small blind and you're clearly the shortest stack, you actually start calling really loose. This is a rule of thumb that you can also um, incorporate in your own game. You, you see that a lot on these type of bubbles. So we want to be calling hands, as you just have seen, that I honestly would have not called either before I saw what we're supposed to do in theory. So this is where it's time to gamble. This is where it's time to take a big risk busting out of the money. But the upsides are huge because we're going to be one of the bigger stacks on this table. We're going to be covering a bunch of other stacks. So here, uh, I see them important. Yes, but remember, we are facing hands like 9-5 off, 9-6 off, um, jack-8 off, right? So very, very poor hands. We're often going to be having 65% equity. Uh, so definitely worth the risk. However, if you would assume that someone is not shoving 100% of his hands, maybe only shoving 70, 80%, I mean, you've seen that I folded 9-6 off, right? Then, of course, adjust. And I would recommend maybe calling one pip tighter for each hand. So let's say if we want to call ace-8 suited, that in reality we call ace-9 suited. Just to factor in that we assume our opponents are not so aware that they're supposed to be shoving 100% of hands. So as you can see here, already major difference for our shoving range from the cutoff and also calling ranges from the button on a stone bubble. And in the, in the other half of the quiz, we're then gonna be looking into the calling range for the small blind, big blind, and believe me, things are getting crazy. So yeah, if you wanna check it out, just go to paired.com. And I really hope that has given you some insights on how we're supposed to approach these spots as, as a mid stack and also as a big stack for calling range and shoving ranges. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And then also since WCOOP is starting soon, best of luck. I mean, yeah, it's still two weeks to go, but I hope your preparation goes well. And then see you guys at the tables.